Defense, migration, economy, climate change and EU reform. These are some of the top concerns for Europeans. But how do we tackle these issues? Well, with the European elections just around the corner, it's your chance to make your voice heard on how these challenges should be addressed. Let's start with defense and let's face it. Europe is at war, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine now entering its third year with no end in sight. Reports suggest that Russia could sustain its military operations in Ukraine for another three years, with plans to expand its military personnel to 1.5 million by 2026. A confrontation between the EU and Russia is no longer an impossibility. But support for Ukraine varies, some advocating for minimal intervention, while others want more intervention. And here's where the European parties come in. Now for those who don't know, when you vote for your national parties back at home, you are indirectly voting for a European political group. So for example, if you vote for the CDU in Germany or Forza Italia in Italy, you're indirectly supporting the EPP group. Similarly, voting for the FDP in Germany or the VVD in the Netherlands means you're indirectly supporting Renew Europe. There are of course many more parties affiliated with these groups from all across the continent. And you can check the description for more information on which party aligns with whom. Quick note though, the German AFD used to belong to the IND group, but have since been kicked out due to being too extreme. Helping Ukraine is particularly strong among Renew Europe, the EPP and the ECR group, all advocating for increased support. I put Renew Europe as the number one, as they have defense and Ukraine as the number one priority in their manifesto. The SD and the Greens are also very pro Ukraine, but it is listed towards the end of their manifesto with a lot less detail. On the other hand, the left supports sanctions against Russia, but opposes military spending and NATO expansion. Meanwhile, the IND group acknowledges Ukraine's sovereignty rights, but provides no detail when it comes to financial or military support. So what about EU military integration? Right off the bat, the IND group and the left are really not keen on it. The left wants to demilitarize as much as possible. And the IND group believes defense should be managed by the member states, only supporting voluntary defense cooperations when countries want to collaborate. All the other groups support joint military procurement and interoperability. The ECR is an interesting case. They explicitly state they don't want a European defense union, but their leader has suggested an EU army could be on the agenda. So their stance is somewhat ambiguous, placing them in the middle. As for the Greens and the SD, they favor a defense union and strategic autonomy, but provide very few specifics. The EPP and Renew Europe, however, are very clear in their ambitions. The EPP advocates for a cyber brigade, a missile defense shield and a nuclear shield. Renew Europe proposes an EU military academy and have previously mentioned the idea of an EU army. Now let's move to our next topic, migration. Last year, around 400,000 illegal immigrants tried to enter the EU, mainly through routes from West Africa and the Eastern and Central Mediterranean. These numbers have risen for three consecutive years, making illegal immigration one of the foremost concerns for Europeans. In fact, a staggering 24% of Europeans now view it as one of their primary issues. So where do European groups stand on migration policies? Renew Europe, the EPP, the ECR and the IND groups all want to process migrant applications in third countries, outside of the EU. Migrants accepted in these third countries could then be granted asylum there, with a quota allowed to enter the EU. The other three political groups oppose this. The EPP, ECR and IND also support building physical border infrastructure, and the ECR and IND openly oppose the redistribution of migrants across the EU. The left SD, Greens and Renew Europe call for saving migrants in the Mediterranean, a stance that the EPP stays quiet on, while the ECR and IND reject it. The left goes even further, wanting to abolish Frontex, the EU's border security force, and eliminate EU border fences, arguing that issues need to be resolved at the source, in migrants' countries of origin. Before we look at the third reason, I quickly want to share an experience. Recently, I was overwhelmed by the stress of balancing my demanding full-time job, my YouTube channel, and my active personal life involving my girlfriend, friends, family, and sports. This was impacting my health and mood, leading to difficulties in prioritizing and failures on multiple fronts. I found myself losing friends, experiencing stress with my girlfriend, and noticing the quality of my YouTube content degrading. 
During this chaotic period, I wish I had sought the guidance of a therapist. A therapist could have offered a neutral perspective, helping me refocus on what truly matters. This guidance would have been invaluable in re-establishing a healthier balance and improving my well-being. If you're going through a challenging time like I was, I highly recommend checking out BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that makes starting therapy easier and less intimidating. They can match you with one of over 30,000 licensed therapists based on your needs and preferences, giving you access to a wider range of expertise than you may have available in your city. Plus, you can have therapy sessions via phone call, video chat, or messaging, whatever is most comfortable for you. So join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and happier life. Go to betterhelp.com slash EUMadeSimple or select EUMS at sign up for a special discount of your first month of therapy. Now let's move to our next topic, climate change. And let's face it, we're not meeting the crucial target of keeping global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Extreme weather events are becoming more frequent, glaciers are melting at unprecedented rates and sea levels are rising. EPP, Renew Europe and S&D want to stick to the current Green Deal and have Europe climate neutral by 2050. The Greens and the left want to speed things up, pushing for climate neutrality by 2040 and 2035 respectively. The ECR wants to review the Green Deal and not commit to any new climate regulations before reviewing and implementing the existing ones. The IND, however, says a clear no to the Green Deal. While I do want to encourage green renewables, they do not want any bans. As for nuclear energy, the left, Greens and S&D are against it, while the others are in favor. Next, there's economy and competitiveness. Dramatic differences are emerging. GDP in the US surged by 6.3%, in China, 5.4%, while the EU lagged behind with a meager 0.3% growth last year. Our industry is leaving the block, and we are simply falling behind. It is difficult to compare political groups at this point, but we can look at their suggested EU spending per party. The more left-leaning parties are against austerity and believe the EU needs to spend more on its industry and population. The left wants to invest in green jobs, public services and industrial transformation, requiring massive investments that exceed the EU budget many times over. The Greens and the S&D also have ambitious spending plans, with the Greens specifying the need for 200 billion euros of investment annually, and the S&D calling for a made-in-Europe strategy to invest in the green and digital transition. The EPP and Renew Europe are a bit more modest, calling for industrial policies, but not to the excess of the other three. Also, both the EPP and Renew Europe want to reduce regulation. As for the ECR and IND, they don't want to spend any more taxpayer money and would like the EU to reduce its budget rather than increase it. And then there's EU reform and enlargement. The EU is far from perfect. Countries can single-handedly veto key decisions and the process for electing our commission president remains unclear. So the question remains, will we embrace change? The Greens, Renew Europe and SND want EU reforms now, calling for the removal of the veto vote for tax matters and foreign policy. They want a stronger parliament, where the Commission president is elected by the people. The EPP, on the other hand, is very fuzzy about what they want, neither endorsing reform nor rejecting it. The left wants to strengthen the European Parliament, but is against removing the veto. As for the IND and ECR, both are clearly against any type of reform, as they are worried about an EU power grab. Regarding enlargement, all parties are generally for it, except for the IND. So here you have a clear overview of what these parties want for each of these key issues. Be aware though, this is a super high level overview. And if you want more information, please watch our guides on each individual political group. These will give you an in-depth overview of each of these groups. For example, check out the right-wing ECR here, or the liberal Renew Europe here. And most importantly, go and vote on the 6th to 9th of June. Your voice is so important and will define the direction our continent will take. Thank you for watching. And if you like our content, please subscribe and like the video. And if you want to support us further, please sign up to Patreon. Until next time.